The Awakening presents Going Deeper with Ben Cerullo, a conversation designed to help believers live victoriously through God's Word. Here's our host, Ben Cerullo. Well, welcome to the broadcast today, Going Deeper. That's what it's all about, is diving into God's Word. And I'm here with my brother, the Bishop Jacques Thomas. What's up, brother? Just diving into the Word today like we do. Yes, sir. Yes, that's, sir. That's what it's about, man. God's Word is our strength. It's mm-hmm. our foundation. He's our help in very present times of danger and trouble. And, uh, man, everything is in this book. It is alive. Yes. <laughs> and it is available. <laughs> to all. <laughs> yeah, that's to the all. thing, you know. To all, man. He is my shield and my buckler. You know what I mean? That's the Word, man. It's the Word. You can't live without it. You yeah. need it on a daily basis. and. I love Smith Wigglesworth. He says, you know, some people like to read their Bible in Greek and so some in Hebrew, but I like to read it in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's well, you the know, way. I like for, I like to read the Word, and I love when the Word reads me. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it reads me, man. It reads me. It brings me back and to understand that when I come to the end of myself, of every time of things I go through, I need the word. Yeah. I need the word. I need you. I need the Lord. So, yeah, I'm ready to get in, brother. Well, you know, today we're breaking down the blog from this week, uh, talking about leaving nothing undone. And, uh, you know, let's, we're talking about it from Joshua here in uh, Joshua 11:15. It says, Just as the Lord had commanded Moses his servant, so Moses commanded Joshua. And so Joshua did it, and he left nothing undone of all that the Lord had commanded Moses. You know, that that right there, you know, just is a key for us to be able to apply to our lives as believers because I think sometimes we think we're under grace and we're just, we just kind of live this sloppy lifestyle with yeah. God. And uh, sometimes not consciously, not meaning to, but we take this great God of endless grace and love just mm-hmm. for granted sometimes mm-hmm. and uh, forget to apply His Word or we only apply it where we want to apply it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> where it feels good to apply it, and the places it doesn't, you know, we just do our own thing. But, yep. you know, Joshua, God commanded Moses, you know, the hierarchy you can yeah. see with God. You know, there's yep. that's a whole other probably thing we could get into talking about <laughs> is just order in the mm-hmm. body of Christ and being able to follow instructions follow yeah. and receive from, you know, other people. But God... The Lord commanded Moses, his servant. Moses commanded Joshua, and Joshua did. And he left, not only did he do, he left nothing undone of all that the Lord had commanded Moses. And something key that we need to apply to our life if we're ever going to see the fulfillment of everything that God has for us. Yeah, well, we, we have to begin to look at the areas. I mean, let's look, go back and look at Jesus when he sends out the twelve. You know, he sends them out. I was just thinking about it. He says, nothing undone. When he sends them out to go and to go preach the gospel, to lay hands on the sick, to deliver yeah. all those that was oppressed and everything, they came back with a good report. Yeah. That, you know, Master, we've done everything that you asked of us. We did it. Yeah, and when we did it, it worked. <laughs> You're exactly right, you know. And uh, there was nothing left undone. Yeah. You know, now they did celebrate. And we understand that, you know, God, Jesus uh, turns around and tells them, you know, Lord, be excited that your name is written in the Lamb Books of Life. Yeah. But they left nothing undone. Yeah. They followed his command, you know, looking at the order. Jesus gives a command. Yeah. They well, go out and fulfill it. And that was the same pattern because Jesus yes. said, I do nothing except what I see my father do. That's exactly right. So Jesus got instructions from the father. He gave instructions mm-hmm. to us. And, and like you said, they came back excited. <laughs> Even the demons are subject to us <laughs> in your name. And, that's exactly right. You know, because they... They followed, you know, the word of God, mm-hmm. and that's really what it, they obeyed the word, and that's what Joshua was doing was that's obeying right. the word. It, it, the literal even means that he turned, he left, uh, he didn't turn aside from anything. Yes, you know, he stayed focused, and yeah. and we can't turn aside from all, you know, this day and age that we live in is a critical time, especially here in America and even around the world, because everybody's facing the same uh, social issues, mm-hmm. you know, with same-sex mm-hmm. marriage. Yep. Uh, with the degeneration of our societies and our cultures and you know as in the days of Noah so will it be when yeah. the son of man returns and all those things those sexual sins those uh, injustice all those things were mm-hmm. taking place in Noah's day uh, those things are 
trying to gain a foothold in our day. And you know, we're yeah. even seeing you know Supreme Court overturning the vote of yeah. the people. Yeah, and it's yeah. like we can't leave God's word undone or compromise his standard mm-hmm. we've got to stick true to god's standard exactly not that we right. don't love people not that we don't want to see him get saved mm-hmm. jesus died for yeah. uh, people struggling with homosexuality mm-hmm. just like he died for the one who's gossiping or That's exactly right eating too much food you know how many fat yeah. pastors do we have you know? <laughs> gluttony <laughs> i've been on that side <laughs> you know but it's the same difference it's sin yeah. at the end of the day exactly. it's not it's a good awesome. witness and nope. we've got to be a witness That's exactly right and uh, we can't leave God's word undone. And so we've got to look and we've got to dot every I, cross every T, and look in God's uh, scriptures to find out. He, even when Jesus, he confronted the religious leaders saying, you know, giving them a hard time because what they would have been given to their parents mm-hmm. to take care of them, they said, now this goes to the temple. Yeah. And they were doing it out of an impure heart, you know, yep. and he checked them up, you know, like, we're doing those same things today, not only in the world, but in the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we need to be able to be faithful to his commands because that's the only way to see the kingdom come. It is. It is, Ben. And, you know, going back to what you say, you know, he even at this point, he says, you know, I give you even a new covenant. Yeah. Even if I write my laws in my words on, on your, your heart, heart. and your mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's now written in us. Yeah. And so we have to fulfill what he put in us. You cannot leave nothing undone. What, no. what did that, I mean, that really speaks volume at this point because um, we want to, as you said, compromise. We yeah. wanna, and we become tolerant of things. We, wanna, we don't want to offend nobody. I don't want to preach that message. I don't want to give that message. Yeah. I don't want to, because I want to offend nobody. Well, guess what? The word of God is already. It, it's offensive. <laughs> yeah. So. Come on. Because it, it comes against, you know, it convicts everything. you. So it, yes. it, it cuts you where you're living out of place. So when you hear it, it offends you. It it's offends exactly your flesh because right. your flesh says, I don't want to eat that. Exactly right. And your flesh is all about you. Yeah. It's about self. So the word of God, when it comes and it's being commanded, I love it because we can see Joshua. He didn't turn left. He didn't turn right. He followed through. Even though there's a price to pay for yeah. all of this. The war, I got to go fight. I mean, that's the whole deal. But he followed through. He yeah. he. If that's the command, if that's what I must do, that's what I will do. And that's what we have to be as the believers right now in the society that we're growing up uh, growing up with and what's taking place, homosexuality. You got more, what, seven new states that comes down with the marijuana usage and everything that's going on. Next thing you notice, we'll have legalization of prostitution. But yeah, look, guess where what? Where does it stop? Yeah. Where does it stop? But we can't. Yeah, it stops with the people of God, God. standing yes. up for righteousness. Yes. And speaking the truth in love. So, yep. you know, we're not here to to tear people down, to shun them. We want to we want them if they can't hear the gospel from mm-hmm. us, you know, how are they going to hear the good news exactly that right. there's freedom? Yeah. And so we got to we got to stand up for these things. The main thing is this compromise. And mm-hmm. it's when, you know, this liberal spirit has invaded the church and it causes us to compromise. We consult our feelings and our mm-hmm. emotions rather than the word of God. Well, God loves, he's grace, he's all these things. I don't think God would be like that. It's because we're trying to justify and rationalize and yeah. we need to go to God's word and let God's word guide us. When That's he, exactly right. You know, the, I look at it, you know, like in the, the picture that God gives us of the, the tabernacle or the temple. Mm-hmm. That was a place for God to dwell on earth among his people. Exactly right. That was the purpose of it. And he gave him very specific plans. Mm-hmm. When you build it, build it like this. The cubits by this yeah. and the ark and all those different things. You know, all those were pictures. Mm-hmm. And we've got to realize that we are the temple of the living God. That's exactly and right. In order, and we have to build ourselves mm-hmm. into a vessel that's worthy yeah. to carry his glory and mm-hmm. his presence. And it doesn't mean we have to live under legalism and, and uh, trying to be these. We need to try to be, you know, Jesus said, be perfect as I am perfect. So mm-hmm. that was called a command. Yeah. And that was in the New Testament. <laughs> yeah. And that was from Jesus. And he wouldn't ask you to do something if he didn't think you can do it. That's exactly right. Now, you know, we can all get in the argument where we all sin and fall short of the glory mm-hmm. of God. Look, we make mistakes, but there's a place you can get to um, where he's telling us and challenging us to go. Strive yeah. for being perfect as yeah. I am perfect. And, uh, you know, it's just that place of emptying, leaving nothing undone. So analyzing in my life, you mm-hmm. know, if we asked ourselves a question, is there stuff undone in relationships and oh, forgiveness man. areas, in our tempers, uh, 
and sin issues mm-hmm. and you know diff- we all have different things that we all go through and uh, we got to check it all off and make yeah. sure to the best of our abilities that we're working in that direction to leave no stone unturned in mm-hmm. our lives to continue trying to grow and uh, never feel like we ever achieved or, or reached yeah. that place of satisfaction because I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied either, but you know, look at this, you know, nothing undone. What if God decided on the sixth day he didn't want to finish what he had started? Yeah. <laughs> what if he decided on the seventh day, well, I'm not just going to, I didn't finish, but it's all right. You know, what if the, the first day, the second day, you know, you look back. What if Jesus decided, well, the Father said, me, I don't want to finish what I started. Yeah. I, no, nothing undone. You got to complete it. Yeah. It's a complete assignment, and I think that's what we have to all look at on our lives when God calls us to do whatever he calls us to do. Not even the call, being a believer. Yeah. Be a believer. Yeah. Be that. <laughs> Be that individual. Don't compromise. Do nothing. Nothing undone. And I love what you said. We have to check our own personal lives first yeah. because that's what it's going to start at. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, you need to go get that worked out. Yeah. You, you need to start with God first and then go to the individual. If you can't get to the individual, you need to just start to all of a sudden let it go. Yeah. Let that go and begin to move forward because it's holding you back. It's holding you back from completing what God wants you to do. Yeah. Well, now we got to get into some people's business here, you know, because <laughs> man, as iron sharpens iron, yeah. so as one man sharpen another. But, mm-hmm. you know, how many times it's happened to me in my life? probably happened to all of us but we're in a meeting we're in a prayer time we're having a alone time with god something happens something moves us mm-hmm. we get stirred and we make a commitment to god in oh, the moment man. because we're feeling it you yes. know the, the spirit of god is moving whether it happens a lot when people mm-hmm. decide to give hey mm-hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna sow a seed because god's leading me to sow this seed yeah um, and then they never fulfill that promise mm-hmm. or man i'm gonna God, tomorrow I'm going to get up. I'm going to be in your word. I'm going to, today is going to be my day. And we make these promises to God. And then when tomorrow comes, or maybe we stay faithful for a short season, then all of a sudden we find ourselves in this place. We don't even know how we got there. What? Well, we didn't complete that promise, that yes. commitment. You know, we were talking about it earlier, but yeah. in Ecclesiastes here, uh, talks about it in the fifth chapter mm-hmm. that when you make a vow to God, uh, do not delay. It doesn't say, you know, how many times do we delay mm-hmm. even? It says don't delay. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Yeah. But when you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed, because it's better not to vow than to vow and to not pay. You mm-hmm. know, so the Bible, the Word of God, uh, ref, you know, it shows that the person who makes the promise and doesn't is a fool. Yes. And so it's a foolish thing to do. We got to be careful to guard ourselves that even if you're feeling it, that's why I always ask people, look, when it's time for the altar, many times, look, I'm not going to, I'm asking you to count the cost right now. Exactly before right. you come up here, before you start running up in your excitement and in your emotion, uh, I'm not against your emotions, but they're going to get you to make a vow and yep. not pay it. Because when yep. you go home, you're going to go back to life and it's not going to be this nice warm fuzzy feeling Mm -hmm. you're feeling right Mm -hmm. now Mm -hmm. and then what are you going to do so make that commitment before you do it and uh you know so look if you're listening to us today and that's been you in the past you you just need to repent the bible says he's faithful and just to forgive us separates our sins as far as the east is from the west and then get back up and finish that vow exactly right even though you know it says don't delay to pay it it's better to be delayed than not to pay it (laughs) at all. all but it's also better not to delay. Yeah. But if well, you find yourself there, man, just get up and pay yeah. that thing. Well, it's just it's like, you know, we were talking earlier. It's like Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira. Yeah. You know what I mean? They made a vow. You know what I mean? We're going to sell this land. Yeah. And what we're going to get out of it, we're going to give to the church. Yeah. That I mean, that's what they made an agreement, husband and wife. We're going well, to give Well, because they were the in that moment. They <laughs> might have been in one of those services. <laughs> you know, I see the work getting ready to get done. You know what I mean? Want to be a part of a great work. And they make a vow. But then all of a sudden, when push came to shove and they saw the money. Yeah. And they oh, man, saw, that's a lot of money. <laughs> you know, and now now they don't want to pay that vow. Yeah, right? well, I mean, Peter said, you know, when it was yours, didn't you have the power? To, you made the commitment. I didn't make you that's make exactly it. exactly right. <laughs> you were the one who decided so, to do that. 
And, and you, now all of a sudden you don't want to give God his. Yeah. You know, now the spirit isn't mad at you, you know. And so, you know, you go through it, you read it, you know, they both died, you yeah. know, as, as a result. In the uh, New Testament. In the New, yeah. <laughs> of, as all by what? Because of a vow. Yeah. And, and, and they were willing to have, they were willing not to do what well, they had committed out to do. Because God is a God of his word. That's exactly that His right. word is important and he expects our word to be important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can't leave those things undone in our lives and, Many times we find ourselves undone mm -hmm. inside because we failed to fulfill those things yep. and because we failed to obey things we knew we should have done and we didn't do. You know, those are the sins of omission, exactly. the sins right. of commission. You know, that means that it's the blatant things that you do that you're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sleeping with your neighbor's mm -hmm. wife. It's swearing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, gossip. It's lying. It's cheating and stealing. It's those blatant sins. But yep. the. The sin of omission is knowing the right thing to do mm -hmm. and not doing it. At all. And right. those are things that make us undone on the That's inside. Exactly right. And the more that we do that, the more we harden our hearts, the more we live in that place, uh, the more our lives need to be brought back into order. We, mm -hmm. need to be, we need to be making sure that when we know what we're supposed to do, that we do it. That when we make a promise to God that we are quick to not delay, but to fulfill those things to Him and uh, make sure that we're... We're not being like Ananias and Sapphira. That's exactly because, right. You know, God's given you power over your mouth. Yeah. You don't have to say the things uh, that you're going to do. If you make a commitment, mm -hmm. then follow through on it. Um, he's given you his spirit to convict you so that you can fulfill everything that he's asked us to do. He, right. he doesn't want you to do it your way and, like, compromise his word no. to try to relate to people. Yeah. And even, you know, Aaron's sons. And when they offered the strange fire, mm -hmm. they offered profane fire mm -hmm. before the Lord and they were both struck down dead. Uh, some people say they were drunk when they did it. Um, you know, the scripture is not exactly clear, but they basically they took fire from somewhere other than the altar. It's exactly to right. bring before the holy mm -hmm. God. And they tried. They did it their way. And I see churches doing that today in the name of uh, trying to reach more people. Yep. In the yep. name of, man, we're not going to offend them. People are going to get saved. Man, they're not getting saved. Come on. No, your church isn't growing because of that. You're offering strange mm -hmm. fire. You're trying to do it a different way. You're trying to be the Holy Spirit, and you're trying to put your effort into your business plan and your marketing efforts, and that's strange fire. That is strange fire. And you, that's, that's leaving things undone. That's mm -hmm. not doing it God's way. And uh, so we gotta be, we got to guard ourselves against those things and oh. be careful. Well, we really do, man, because, you know, he says what? My word will not return to back me void. Yeah. So no matter what, God's word, once he speaks it, it's going to accomplish that what he sent it forth to do. It's yeah. not going to come back undone. Yeah. Nothing, it's going to be complete, you know. And so he's looking for us, who he's spoken the word to, to return back to him the complete product. Yeah. <laughs> well, and. You know, how many times, too, have you heard God speak to you either prophetically through uh, somebody mm -hmm. or in that quiet time with the Lord or as you're reading the word, God begins to speak to you about something in your life that you're supposed to do. Yeah. And you don't do it. Yeah. Or you, you don't follow or you follow it up until that point where you're too scared to go any further. That's exactly right. Man, that's leaving some stuff on that. <laughs> yes, it is, man. And and you have to pay you're gonna have to pay for that. Yeah. There's there's because he commanded you to do it. Yeah. Go back. I mean, he's gonna get it done. It's gonna cost you something. Let's go we talked about Jonah. Yeah. Look at Jonah. He was like, Oh, you want me to call oh, go to Nineveh? <laughs> really go to Nineveh? Do you know who they are? And God's like, I know who they are. I'm calling you. To go to Nineveh, yeah, to go preach this message to them, and he's determined. No, nah, I'm not going to do this. He now he answered the call, but he didn't want to do the assignment. Yeah, and that's how most of us are. We answer the call, but we find out the assignment. Well, I don't want to do get that. Swallowed by a great fish and thrown <laughs> overboard, and come yeah, on, he had to go through some stuff. Yeah, but. To just get him to that place to realize this is what God called you yeah. to do. Well, I mean, I think you can trace back in your life. You know, if you're one of those people who God's asked you to do something and now you're going through hell. Yeah. You can maybe trace back to where you didn't do what God asked you to That's do. Exactly right. And if you can go back to that place and correct that action, repent for it and start moving in the right mm -hmm. direction, you know, then you'll start to see things straighten out in your life. Um, not that God's causing you to go through 
um, he doesn't send the calamity on you, but yeah. he allows certain things to get our attention. Place. It and does. And he uses all things together for good. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's something that we need to do. We can't compromise God's word. Nope. we got to stay true to it. So if God said it in his word, we can't try to rationalize or some stuff you just can't figure out. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. some stuff there's just no easy way to talk about it. No. You know, uh, um, some things, sin is just sin. And when you tell somebody that, it's, <laughs> guess what? There's not an easy way to tell them. It's not an easy approach at all. If Jesus is not the Lord of your life, what happens? You go to hell. No. So when you're, that's not the approach that you want to just come out and say, but sometimes people ask you those questions. Yeah. And you can't, you can't try to sugarcoat it. Nope. You know, that's the human flesh because why? You don't want them to be hurt. You mm -hmm. don't want them to think uh, bad about the Lord. But at the same time, there's some, it's just the facts, you know? Um, and we got to stay true to the facts. We got to stay true to God's word. And we need to uh, just really stand on it yeah we need to make sure and analyze our lives and say god show me are there things that are undone in me yep are, are there areas of my life that um i haven't fully surrendered to you and if there are you know then we need to get those things right mm -hmm. we need to lay them before the lord um and we need to get up and keep going and if we've made vows to god that we haven't committed we need to apologize mm -hmm. for not That's committing to or not fulfilling those things and then we need to Put our hand to the plow and get busy. And that's what we have to do, Ben. And I think the one thing here, even you know, even when looking at the context of, of this blog here, nothing's undone. I think it comes down: we must obey at all all times. Yeah, you know that's the key point. At all times, it's going to cost us, yes, but you have to be obedient. What the Spirit is saying to you, what God wants to be fulfilled. Let's just back up. Jesus says in the book of John, he says that the spirit himself doesn't speak on his own. He only speaks of what? The father and what I. Yeah. <laughs> so if the Holy Spirit is saying something to you, it is on behalf of the father to you. So why not be obedient to what he's calling you to do? Whatever, he's, whatever the assignment may be. Yeah. It could be to someone next door that need help. Someone that, that is uh, in your neighborhood that, that car may be broken down. Go by. You know the situation. They may not have, be out of work and it's a hard struggle. God may tell you to go buy groceries. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Whatever he's calling you to do, just do it. Be obedient to that alone. Yeah. Well, and there's some things, like you said, that are in here that you don't need him to speak to you about <laughs> and you're leaving them undone. Yeah. It's, it's the people in need that you pass by every day and you're leaving kingdom work undone. undone. Yes. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not praying for that sick person when you know that mm -hmm. they're sick. It's not, you know, those are, those are acts of the kingdom yes, that we are. can't leave undone. Yes. But he says, you know, go into all the nations, preach mm -hmm. the gospel to every creature, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, freely you've been given, now freely give it away. So we can't. We can't neglect the work of the kingdom. Nope. And we, we can't leave the, his business undone. No, we cannot. No, we cannot because he left it to us. Yeah. He left it, the kingdom work to us to do on this earth. You know, the physical work that has to be done to see the manifestation, it's on us. Yeah. And we can't leave the work undone. We have to complete the assignment that's been given unto us. Yeah. Well, you know, if you've been listening today, I just want you to know it's not an accident and uh, we're not here to to condemn you or to, to heap more, um, more things on top of you because Jesus said, you know, come to me, all you who are weary and heaven laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you because it is easy and my burden is light. So, you know, Jesus is not one to place uh, burdens on us, but uh, he is a God of his word and he wants us to be a people of his word who will follow his word, who will obey his word, who will uphold his word and who will stand on his word and when we give our word to God, he wants to know that he can count on us. So just want to challenge those of you listening, those of you watching, just to, to uh, check your life, take an inventory and ask God, you know, are there things in my life that are undone? Uh, are, are there, think back, are there things you've committed to the Lord in times of intimacy, in times in the altars or in the quiet times of your life that that you haven't fulfilled, uh, fulfilled or finished in your life. I challenge you to, you know, bring those before the Lord. Ask God to forgive you. Get up and, and uh, put your hand to the plow. Go to work. Get those things activated in your life. Get them moving. And um, don't leave things undone. We want to pray for you real quick before we close out today. 
And just, uh, I want to pray that the Lord would just uh, open your eyes to be able to, you know, we, He wants us to be whole. He wants us to be uh, complete. And uh, we can't do that when there's things undone in, in our lives. And um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day, God. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your faithfulness. We just give you thanks and praise. We worship you. Lord, we love you, and I bring before you your people today, the ones who you love, your creation, your beloved God. We stand before you today, and Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just uh, penetrate every heart and every mind right now, and that you would release conviction where conviction is needed, that you would uh, release strength where strength is needed, that you would touch those who are in need of a touch from you today. God, that you would open our eyes to see the places that are undone, that you would make us whole, that we would not be uh, incomplete, Lord, that we would not have an incomplete assignment, God, but that you would help us to fulfill the assignment. So, God, I pray right now for eyes to see those assignments, that you would anoint their eyes right now, that you would anoint their ears to hear your voice, Lord. Where we've gone astray, God, I pray that we would hear your voice calling us back that we would leave the wilderness and come back to the master today. I pray right now for those who are lost in the wilderness to return to you. God, I pray that your uh, power of grace would come upon your people right now and give them the ability to obey you in ways that their flesh could never obey you. I pray for grace, grace, and more grace to be released upon their lives right now in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for your word. Help us to... Uh, fulfill every promise and commitment that we've made to you. Teach us and show us where where we can improve in our lives and fulfill this assignment that you have before us. Help us to be able to say it is well with our soul. We have finished this race that you have set before us. We are we are walking it out daily. And I thank you and I praise you for this opportunity, this moment. I thank you for what you're doing in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you. Amen. 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 Well, I pray that this uh, podcast is a blessing to you. I pray that it is uh, touching your life, not only touching your life, but I pray that it's activating the kingdom in your life. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. And we got to activate the kingdom here on this earth as it is in heaven. We can't sit by. We can't leave the assignment undone. There's sick bodies that need healed. There's people in bondage that need to be free. There's dead people that need to be raised, not only physically, but spiritually. Blind eyes need to be opened. God sent you on assignment to show and demonstrate his kingdom here on this earth. So I challenge you, don't leave it undone. Get out there and be the child of God that he's created you to be. Until next time, stand strong, fight the good fight of faith. We'll see you next week right here on Going Deeper. God bless. If you would like to hear other Going Deeper topics from Ben Cerullo, or would like to know more about The Awakening, visit us at myawakening.com.